I want to continue what we started last, last week on valuing others by today talking about valuing yourself. Now, that may sound like it's completely the opposite of valuing others, valuing yourself, but it is not. Matthew twenty two thirty nine 39 says, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There's actually three or four places where Jesus quoted that. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. It's even in the Old Testament, in Leviticus. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you don't love, value yourself, how well will you value others around you? If you value them as you value yourself. And, and you're probably going to be limited in your value toward others, your love toward others, if you're limited in your love for yourself. So if you've got issues with you, you're probably going to have issues with other people. And you're not going to be able to do as well valuing other people, loving other people the way God wants you to if you can't value you. So let's talk about how well you value you. If you want to turn to Ephesians chapter 2. And um, if you don't have this verse underlined or highlighted, some of you have electronic devices. I love the electronic devices because when I would underline in my Bible, I'd always be like bothered by the fact that my underlines weren't straight. And I tried to carry a little, you know, a little ruler kind of thing so I could underline straight. But then, you know, I wouldn't have the same color ink pen. And that bothered me. And then I got to the point where I was using a highlighter and carried a highlighter in my Bible. You know, that was better. But then it bled through to the other side. Oh, man. And I got to tell you, I love when I highlight something in the electronic. You just take your finger and you go, and it's just perfect every time. It just looks so nice. All right. Enough about my weirdness. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10 for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand so that we should walk in them. There's so much in this chapter, but let's just stick with that verse today. Um, you need to remember and realize and recognize that you were put together by God. God put you together. I heard um, Bill Johnson's son, Eric, talk about this word a while back, and he said that the word in the Greek for workmanship actually could be translated masterpiece. You are God's masterpiece. Look at somebody next to you and tell them you are a masterpiece. Now just look at them and say, you are fabulous. Fabulous. You are. Um, do you think of yourself? <laughs> Here's where we go. Do you think of yourself as a masterpiece? That's, that's, that's hard to do sometimes. To think of ourselves in a positive light like that. Um, but here, I got news for you. God likes the way that he created you. He does. He likes the way that he created you. And that begs the question then, do you like the way you created you? I was sitting at a table. Where was I? Someplace, a graduate thing or something, there were two ladies sitting there and they both had really straight hair and they were looking at this other lady. Oh, it was a family get together. And they were looking at this other lady. Some, some, we met some family we'd never met before recently and um, so we were at this reunion and I never met these ladies and one of them actually wasn't part of the family she was just a next door neighbor and and she was invited over to eat because they had so much food so much food oh man this time of year is hard family reunions graduations so much food so little time anyway um, and they were both saying something about this other lady who had such curly hair and they were kind of like, you know, talking about it. And I just grinned and I says, yeah, but you know, the ones with the curly hair are wishing their hair was straighter. 
and the ones with the trader hair are wishing their hair was curly, and you guys know how that goes, right? You, you look and you think, oh, that, this could be different or that could be different. My wife likes her curly hair, except for every once in a while in the morning when this one side decides to curl like out of its mind crazy. <laughs> Trying to tame it. But God created you the way you are, and you should like the way God created you. And if you don't like the way God created you, then you are in the unenviable position of being in resistance to God. Think about that a minute. <laughs> and if you don't like you, and you don't like the way God created you, then you are basically letting God know that you are smarter than him. <laughs> we don't think of it that way, but we kind of, you know, we maybe should. How do you think that's going to work out for you, by the way, if you, if, you, if you letting God know all the time that the way he made you wasn't adequate? What he did was not really that good, and you don't really care for it? I don't think that's a good idea. The other day, by the way, I was praying, and I heard myself say, because I pray out loud a lot. If you pray silently, you know, that kind of works, but I guess it's got news for you. It only happened one time in the Bible, and uh, the rest of the time people pray out loud. And you know me, I've talked about this for years, and I'll keep talking about it. I believe there's a verbal advantage. I think you ought to pray out loud. And I was praying out loud like I'm in habit of doing, and I heard myself say, I was having this kind of talking to God about how some things were working out, you know, because some things have worked out amazing. I, I look at certain things that the way they've worked out, I'm just like, it takes my breath away. My son, by the way, today is at their new church in Edgerton where he's going to be on staff and he's being introduced for the first time today. And I still, my mind is boggled that he sold two really expensive houses and found a different job in a month. It's it just, I don't, I'm, it, God does things. And so I was talking to God about that and I was talking about some other things that aren't working out the way I, in my infinite wisdom, would like them to work. And um, I actually heard myself say, you know, just kind of giving in to God. Things aren't working out. Everything doesn't work exactly the way you want it to work. And, and I, I, you know, in, in kind of acquiescing to the realities of things, I said, well, I said, your ideas are usually better than mine. Usually, yeah. I started laughing at myself immediately, <laughs> laughing out loud. I'm just like, yeah, yeah, like, usually. Like, mine are ever better than his. Come on. But what, is that, what does that really show you about me? And by the way, you do it too, just so you know. What does that show you when you hear yourself say something? You recognize that, that you have a little stinking thinking going on right there you recognize that, that you're not necessarily cooperating with God's program all the time the way you ought to be. You recognize that you think you're smarter than God in a way, you know, that there's... Because if you don't say it out loud, sometimes you're just thinking it and you don't really say what you're think, thinking. But then you, when you actually say it, sometimes you hear yourself and you go, that's, that's stupid right there. That's major stupid right there. But it's lurking. You know, these thoughts are lurking. Sometimes because we don't verbalize them, they're lurking back there and we're thinking things... And if we would just say them, we would realize that's probably not going to happen. As humans, we often struggle to understand what God's doing and wonder why he doesn't do it different. Well, when you wonder why he doesn't do it different, sometimes that why is legit. And sometimes it's more of, I think I'm smarter or I think my way would be better. And we don't really think of it that way, but it kind of is, you know. Um, we need to be reminded, I think, from time to time, and we need to remind ourselves from time to time that God knows what he's doing. How many think God knows what he's doing? Yeah, I think he does. I really do. Um, and I don't think he's up in heaven um, looking around at anybody on the planet going, oh, I wish I hadn't made them. Except maybe John. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> Look at that. He knows he wanted to make John because Brie was just, that's what she was waiting on right there. She was like, poor girl. <laughs> no, 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 see, now, but we do that. We're a little self-deprecating. We kid around and all that, but you are just what God had in mind for her. 
And she's just what God had in mind for you. That's why when a man meets a woman like that, he goes, whoa, man. So... That's a good word right there. <laughs> you know, another thing I want to make you aware of is God's not displeased with where you are right now. He's not displeased with where you're at in your life. Um, if you are where, if you aren't, let me say it this way. If you aren't where you're supposed to be, how many of you think God can fix that? And in his timing and in his way. And again, I'm, I, I, I want my son to sometimes stand up here and tell the testimony of this. I don't know when he's going to get to, but, you know, he was in Virginia. He made a promise to this wonderful young woman, you know, I'm going to bring you back to Ohio someday when we have kids. And he realized kids is plural as of February, you know, they have kids. And she was like, remember your promise when we have kids? And he wasn't where God wanted him to be, so guess what? God got him where he wanted him to be. Got him back here. I'm okay with that. I think that's pretty cool. If God needs you to be someplace else, he can get you there. He can. And he can do that even if he has to send a whale. And, and, and God is, listen to how I wrote this down, I want to say this right. And God is happy with when you are happening. Like right now. You're happening now. He didn't plan on you living sometime in the future. He didn't plan on you being someplace in the past. There are people who think they would be happier if they'd been living in this century or that century or this decade or that decade. Oh, I wish and they look back. Or I wish and they look forward. But you are right now where God wants you to be come on you are living in the time that you were created for he didn't create you for later he didn't create you for something else he created for you to be who you are to be like you are and to do probably most of what you're doing now does that mean we can't do things that he doesn't want us to do oh no we, we can but you weren't born out of time and if you're still here, it's because he's not finished with you yet. And that's a big deal. Now that I'm in my 60s, I'm going to start talking to all the old people. Because I've made up my mind. No matter how my body looks, no matter how gray my hair and my beard become, I refuse to get old. You can get old if you want to. I'm not getting old. Don't come to me and talk about all this technology. I wonder, does anybody remember anybody saying, them toilets, that's just too crazy. Just give me an outhouse. I feel much better. In the deep south, maybe. <laughs> I'm just saying... I believe technology can be very helpful. I told somebody I ought, to, I ought to be working at a cell phone place for all these old people who come in and say, just give me a flip phone. Smack. <laughs> By the way, if I just smacked you, sorry. Get yourself a smartphone and see your grandkids and your great grandkids. Come on. Man, these new phones are so good. And they're easier to use than the old flip phones. I was trying to mess with a flip phone the other day. I won't tell you who has it. I was trying to figure out how to fix something. I was like, do, 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 do. <sighs> Yeah, where's the setting? <laughs> that was it. Come on, people. We live in a great time. We really do. And God put you here for such a time as this. That's what you need to remember. And he put you here for a purpose. Our text that we read earlier says that you're here to do good works. Another version says, I love this, beautiful actions. You're here for beautiful actions. Do you realize that you are still fully capable of doing beautiful actions? 
No matter how young or how old you are, you're here for beautiful actions. Your purpose is to do great things, good works. We're not here to just scrape by and survive for a while and then make it into heaven by the skin of our teeth. That's an old hillbilly phrase there, skin of your teeth. Pretty thin. Yeah, that's just black. <laughs> I had my teeth cleaned the other day, I'll have you know. <laughs> You're a saint. That's what the Bible says. You're a saint in the kingdom of God and you're here on a mission and that mission is beautiful to do beautiful things. And no matter what mistakes you've made, it's never too late to start doing beautiful things. Anybody here besides me make a few mistakes? Yeah. But no matter how many mistakes you've made, it's never too late to start doing the beautiful things that God put you here for. And just let me say this. This is an interesting thought that just popped into my head. But you realize some of the most beautiful things are done by people who made a lot of dumb mistakes. And then they suddenly come to a revelation of where they weren't doing it right and they get on board with what God does. And sometimes the most amazing things, is done, the most amazing, amazing things are done by people you would never expect to do them because of all they've been through and all they've suffered. Matthew 5 verse 14 says, You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor does anyone light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all those who are in the house. Let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. You are a light. When people see your beautiful actions, they will see God's light. Shine on, baby. Shine on. You're here to shine. Ephesians 5, 8 says, For you were formerly darkness, but now you are light in the world. Walk as children of the light. Do you see yourself as light? Do you see yourself as light? You light up the room when you walk in. You light up my life. <laughs> You know, God's been doing this with me for years now. I don't know if I've said anything about it or not, but I'll get ready to go into a place and sometimes as I'm going in, he'll just say, shoulders back, head up, head in there with a big smile on your face. Make somebody's day. I can just be walking into Walmart and suddenly think to myself, hey, I'm a child of God. I'm the light of the world. I'm just going to walk in here like I own this place. I don't, but my father does. This isn't pride. This isn't me thinking too highly of myself. This is me thinking of myself the way God says he thinks of me. 1 Peter 2.9 says, But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession, so that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Man, these are good verses. Is this how I think of myself? Is this how I see myself, the way he sees me? This is why I exist. This is why you exist. This is why you're breathing right now. And if you're living with your focus on anything less, then you're living below your privilege and outside of your calling. You are amazing. Don't let anybody else tell you you're not and don't let yourself tell you you're not. Because the less amazing you believe you are, the less amazing you're going to behave. You're going to live up to whatever you really believe about you. You're going to live up to it. Some people are miserable and they believe they're supposed to be miserable and they live miserable. It's just so easy to lose sight of what God says about us and to get sidetracked with details and lose sight of the bigger picture. 
I know not everything works out the way I think it should. It's probably working out better than I know. And I'm probably more worried about it than I need to be. And worry is a sin. You know, the devil constantly works to get us to believe the lies that will distract us and keep us from enjoying the journey that we're on right now. Because whatever you're going through right now, God has something in that that he's able to use for your good. So stop believing the lie that you're not amazing because you are. You are. Look at somebody next to you and say, you are amazing. Now, I've said this before, but if you believe the lie, you empower the liar. If you believe the lie, you empower the liar. So if you're believing any lies about yourself, if I'm believing any lies about myself, if we believe any lies about what we do, where we go, who we are, how we were raised, we're going to empower a liar. And stop believing the lies about believers around you. That's a tricky one right there. Because sometimes we see that we're not all that in a bag of chips. Sometimes we see the problems with people around us. But while we recognize and don't ignore the things that need to be fixed about us and about others, we still need to see who God says they are. And call them into their destiny, not call them on their history. Encourage others to shine with you and shine with them. And look for places to shine. I do. I just look for them. So whether you're getting out of your car and going into the school or going into the store or going into the gas station or going into the church or going into the, you name it, work, you ought to shine at work. Slap a smile on your face. Just come on. Tell yourself, I'm going to smile my way right into this place. And when they look at you and say, what are you grinning about? You'll have an answer. God's just so good to me. Really? Yeah. Just put a smile on your face, run into every place you go in and just love the hell out of people. That's what you need to do. Or love people out of hell, whichever way you want to look at it. Somebody says, oh, you're just kind of, what's the word I'm looking for? In, in, indignant? No, I don't know. You, you, you know, you say stuff like that. Love the hell out of people. Oh, ah, you don't, ah, come on. A lot of people are already in a lousy place. And they really are. They're in a place of hell. Or hell's trying to get a hold of them. Hell's not a bad word, it's just a bad place. So when people are in a bad place, you can be that person who helps them get in a good place. Isaiah 60, verses 1 and 2 says, Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, deep darkness will cover the earth, and deep darkness the peoples. But the Lord will rise upon you, and His glory will appear upon you. That's awesome. That's awesome. Your mission, should you decide to accept it, is just to shine. You know, sometimes we just, we're trying to do too much. What would happen if we just remembered that we are the light and we just shined? Well, I gotta, I gotta shine and I gotta do this in addition to it. I gotta shine and I gotta do that in addition to it. I gotta, if, if I'm going through the checkout line, I can't just shine. I've gotta, I've gotta tell them about Jesus. What if you just look like Jesus and they ask you first? What if people just love being around you to the point where at some point they want to know what it is you've got? But if you don't believe you've got it, you don't act like you've got it, you don't walk like you've got it and talk like you've got it and think you've got it, it's not going to be evident. 
But what if you just walk around everywhere expecting that somebody's going to say, what is it you're doing and what have you got? I want some of that. Well, I could never be that. Yes, you could. Don't tell me you can't do it because I know you can. And the devil knows you can, by the way, and that's his greatest fear. The devil is so worried that you'll suddenly realize that you are the light of the world and you'll just shine without even saying the name Jesus sometimes, but people will come to you and then say, what is it going on inside of you? And you'll say, Jesus. But I've messed up, Pastor Jim. What if I've ruined God's plan for my life? Jeremiah 29, 11. Somebody said this recently. I don't remember where I saw it. Maybe it was, maybe it was Chris Volatin. It really, it really just, I just laughed so hard. I've read this verse so many times and I just hadn't thought of this little angle on it. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you, to give you a future and a hope. Or hope in a future. Did you hear that? Did you hear the word plans? Do you know why God has plans? Not plan? Because no matter what you do, He'll have another plan. He has plans. God already knew He was going to have to have plans with you. <laughs> he already knew He was going to have to have plans with me. He already knew that I was going to miss it sometimes. You know, that I was going to be driving down the road and the exit was going to go by and my GPS was starting to start saying, recalculate, recalculate, recalculate. And I was going to have to do something different. The other day I was on the phone talking to some people and trying to follow the GPS at the same time. I went right past my exit. And then I had to like, oh man... So then I, you know, next turn, it recalculated, and then I missed the next, and then I missed another turn. You're just like, oh, man, I can't talk to people and follow directions at the same time. You know, I, I, we all make those, we all missed it here or there in our lives, and he has plans. Plans. You're not going to, don't sweat it. He has plans. I don't care what you've done. He has plans. I don't care how bad you've messed up. He has plans. You know, here's the only problem that we have with some people. They don't want to admit that they messed up so they can't take advantage of his plans. I'm going in the wrong direction? Nope. This is where I wanted to go the whole time. <laughs> no, it's not where you wanted to go. And he has plans to get you back. And by the way, if you keep going that way, part of his plan may be a brick wall. Just saying. Because he's going to help you get redirected. Yeah, an unfinished bridge. God has one purpose for your life, and that purpose is to do great things. Good works. We read that in our first verse. You're his workmanship. You're his masterpiece. He's created you to do amazing things, and you're going to do amazing things if you'll just believe what he says about you. And no matter what you do, he has plans so that if you mess up what you were going to do, at that moment, He's got plans to bring you back onto the path where you need to be to do more of what he wants you to do. Man, you just, you just need to just live this life and smile and shine and relax. It's going to be okay. It's a good word for our graduates today. You know, you get, well, I don't know what I'm going to study and what if I'm on the wrong major and what am I going to do with this degree when I graduate? Well, 98% of people don't even use their degrees. That's beside the point. Um, and... <laughs> I don't think it's 98. I think it's 79. But anyway, <laughs> there's a lot of people not using their degrees, but, but the educational thing's cool, right? It's good. But while you're there, shine. Wherever you go, just shine. Even if you have to work at Walmart once in a while, shine. At least you're not pushing carts anymore. Thank God. Thank God. Yeah, but I prophesied over the cart guy the other day. Did you hear me say that? Yeah. There was a cart guy outside and I just looked at him and I let, God said, gave me a word for him, so I went over and talked to him. So you see, you might, maybe you need to be back out there where somebody can prophesy. No, never mind. I don't care if you mess up anything, God has a plan to handle that. That's good news. And um, 
as you start shining, even the dullest, most boring things can take on a new light. If you shine, even the dullest, most boring things can take on a new light. That light would be you. In fact, some of the things that we do are so mundane and drab and dark. Like pushing carts. <laughs> that if, if you shine doing that, your light will be even brighter in contrast to the thing that you're doing that seems so blah. Does that make sense? Like, sometimes the dull, boring, kind of anybody could do this thing, and then you bring in your flair for it, and suddenly it's amazing. Have you ever seen these videos of these guys that are traffic cops that do the real fancy stuff, and they've got all these moves, and yeah, and, and they're entertaining, and you put them against a guy who's just like, yeah. You stopped. Oh, man, I hate this job. Oh, yeah. But then the other guys out there going, wah, yeah, you know, doing all this stuff. And everybody's like, wow, that's amazing. You see the difference? That's who you can be. You can be that light in that drab place. You can do this because you are his workmanship, and that's what he said. In his word. And I am not. I mean, I'm stupid a lot, but I'm not stupid enough to tell him his word's wrong about you. I'm not going to go there. He didn't forget something when he put you together. He didn't mess up. He didn't, you know, bring you out a little, you know, like you think we're all, it's almost like we're gingerbread men, you know. Oh, burnt that one. Oh, well. It's not who God is. By the way, do you remember this quote? I can't afford to have a thought about me that God doesn't have about me. Bill Johnson. I love that. I can't afford to have a thought about me that God doesn't have about me. Yeah. I love Bill Johnson. I quote him a lot. Um, I've used that quote several times. By the way, Bill said this one time too. I, I find this amazing. He said the first time you use a quote, he said you say who it's from. And then the second time you use a quote, you say, it's been said, and then you quote it. And then the third time you say, I always say, yeah, and it just becomes yours. So I always say, you can't afford to have a thought about yourself that God doesn't have about you. Right? Yeah. If I'm thinking about myself in a way that God's not thinking about me, I need to slap my silly self and tell my silly self to straighten up. Which is what I did the other day. When I made that stupid statement, well, your plans are usually better than mine. You know, <laughs> man, what an idiot. So, I want to pray into that right now. Stand up. And by the way, Facebook looked like it worked all day today, Matt. And uh, we'll, we'll, keep, we'll keep streaming on Facebook when we can. So if you've got friends and stuff, we'll try to let you know when we're... We've just been having some hiccups, but I think we figured something out. Maybe. So my name is Robbie, and it wasn't Robbie when I walked in. Come on, come on, so. come on. Grab the mic and say it so everybody can hear it, because I... I know a few people might not have heard it. I have a word of knowledge for ne left knee pain. Just okay. Lisa? Anybody else? Maybe just Lisa. Douglas? For Douglas. You guys get around Douglas and I'll pray for Lisa. All right. Come on. Yeah, some of you come over and lay hands on Lisa too. 
That's good. Now let's, uh, for those of us who aren't right there praying, let's just agree in prayer. Father, we thank you. If you revealed it, it's because you want to heal it. And uh, we trust you right now to make a difference where this pain is. And we just say, pain, go in Jesus' name. Let the light of your presence and the power of your spirit just move to those spots where there are pain, where there's pain in these knees. And Father, we just believe that you're making the difference right now. Thank you, Papa God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Anybody else got anything? Anybody else got anything? How's it feeling right now, Miss Lisa? Much better? How's it feel right now, Doug? Her hand was really hot. That's what it's supposed to be. That's good. That's good. See, you are amazing. He wasn't the big guy with the suit and tie. He didn't have a suit and tie today. Just, just, anybody else got something? I love it when this stuff happens. All right, now. So, I'm going to ask God to just simply whack every one of you, however hard it takes, to get stinking thinking about yourself out of your head. Are you ready? Just put your hands out like this. I'm going to say, Holy Spirit, would you just come and if I say slap us silly, Lord, I don't expect it to be painful, but I expect us to find ourselves laughing at our own foolishness, maybe today, maybe this week, maybe this month. But I ask you to help us value ourselves the way you value us. God, convince and work in us so that we will recognize how very valuable you thought each of us was. So valuable that your son was willing to die for each one of us. Help us, God, to recognize the value that you've put into us so that we can recognize the value you've put into others. Forgive us, Lord, for the thinking that sometimes keeps us from seeing ourselves fully and completely wonderful in who you made us to be. Now, God, I know we'll see the things that need to be changed, but I know as we see who we really are, changing those things will be so much easier. So touch everyone in this room. Holy Spirit, come powerfully. And where our thinking is out of whack, we repent and we ask you, Lord, to change us so that we can be your light everywhere we go to everyone we see. Now say this with me. I am the light that he is sending out of this place into every place that I go. Let my light represent the mighty God in a way that shows how much he loves and how much he values everyone around me and how much he values my life. And all this I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.